everyone and welcome back to the series on R programming. Today we're going to be looking at our application of probability theory to the realm of stochastic processes, and in particular one-dimensional random walks. So in case you don't already know about random walks, several applications, especially associated to stock market trading and asset pricing, um, but we're not going to be getting into that here. But once you actually look at the graphs, if you do know anything about asset pricing, the graph actually should look very familiar to you. So what exactly is a one-dimensional random walk, just in case you have never heard of this? So you're going to have two options. You're either going to move to the left or move to the right by a unit of one. And at time t is equal to zero, you're going to start when x is equal to zero. Right? So you have the probability of either moving right or moving left. So probability of moving right is going to be uh, denoted by p. Right? And the probability of moving left would be its complement, so 1 minus p, which I'll denote by q. So let's assume that p is equal to 0 0.5 and its complement being 1 minus p. Now let's introduce or initialize our uh, vectors, which is going to represent our position on the x-axis. So d is going to be initialized to be equal to 0. Okay, Because we're starting at 0 and then we're going to move either right or left. For example, if we move right, then we're at 1. And then at the next iteration, we can either move left or right, so we can either go to 0 or 2. If we go to 2, then we can either go to 1 or 3. If we go to 1, then we can either go to 2 to 0, and so on. Now, since we're going to simulate a random process, we obviously need to set a seed. So let's do a seed of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And let's do a number of iterations for t. Let's go to 20. Of course, this can change up a bit. Let's also count how many times we move to the right and move to the left. So m plus is going to be equal to to the right and n minus is going to be initialized to be equal to zero. That's how many times we're going to be moving to the left, right? So these are the initialization, initialization, initialization of our model parameters. All right? So those are the basics that we definitely need set up. All right? Now let's do our for loop, which is going to walk through our stochastic process step by step. So we're going to do a for loop for k n 1 to t max, t max, and then we're going to do the following. So x is going to represent our uh, sample. Let's actually do x. Actually, let's do s. So let's do s is going to be our sample. So we're going to sample from either left or right with associated probabilities 1 minus p and p respectively. So we're going to sample from the set either r or l. R or L, and we're going to choose one of them, so size one, and then we're going to replace it so we can either move left or right, you know, many times as we want. And the probability of selecting R uh, is going to be equal to P, and then we have Q for the other one. Now, if X is equal to R, or if S is equal to R, then what are we going to do? So D of K plus one is going to be equal to d of k and then plus 1. And the number of times we move to the right is also going to increment by 1 as well. So m plus is equal to m plus plus 1. All right? So that's what happens if we select uh, right. And if s is equal to left, then what are we going to do? So this is going to be equal to the same exact thing except the minus version. So d of k plus 1 will be equal to d of k and then minus 1. dk minus 1. And then since we move to the left, that means the number of times we move to the left will also increment by 1. So n minus is equal to n minus plus 1. All right? So that's going to be our simulation. Now, in case you just want to focus on where we are when x is equal to 1, x is equal to 2, x is equal to 3, because keep in mind, although d is keeping track of our positions, our uh, first entry of d corresponds to t is equal to 0, and the second entry of d corresponds to t is equal to 1. So some people may want to shift that to sort of get the actual positions at time t is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on for a particular x without having to re-index, which can sometimes be confusing. So we can do d starting from 2 to t max plus 1, and that's going to give us our values of x whenever we want, and then we can construct a graph of our stochastic process our one-dimensional random walk. So what we're going to do is we're going to plot a sequence from 1 to t max plus 1. 
1 to t max plus 1, and make sure you put t max plus 1 in parentheses. So that's our sequence. And then we're going to shift it down minus 1 so everything lines up with our graph. And then on the vertical axis, we're going to plot d, uh, pch of 19 for our shape, cx of 0.5 for the size of that point, and let's color it blue. Of course, um, those 19.5 in blue are customizable up to your preference, of course. Uh, once we plot our points, let's connect them with lines, which will make this graph a little bit more easier to read. So 1 to t max plus 1, and then again minus 1. And then let's do d on the vertical axis. And let's do a reference line of 0. So a, b line, 0, 0, and red. Right, so y-intercept is 0, slope is 0. So that gives us a horizontal line. So once we have all of that, as long as we didn't have any misprints in this code, this should run perfectly well. So as you can see, this is going to be our one-dimensional random walk. And why is this yelling at me? Did I not spell the color red correctly? Oh yeah, that should be col is equal to. No big deal. Um, so there's our red line, as we desired. So this is our random walk. So notice that when t is equal to 0, we have a height of 0, and then it moves up, 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 and up, then down, 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 up, 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 down, down, then up once, and then down a few times, and then on our uh, 19th to 20th iteration, it moves up one little unit. Right? So you obviously see that when p is equal to 0.5, it practically uh, stabilizes around um, the line y is equal to 0. But if we were to change this subtly, for example, to 2 0.49, you might uh, guess that this is actually going to be primarily below the horizontal axis. So when we run this, notice that it does sort of still stabilize around the horizontal x-axis, maybe hasn't had enough time to converge. So let's actually increase this tmax to 1000 and give this a run. And now you can clearly see, oh, what do we have here? It's actually going above the line. Well, does that make any sense? Well, it should. Keep in mind this is a stochastic process, so just because it's going to go up uh, for a large amount of time does not necessarily imply that it's going to go down. For example, if we increase this to 10,000, what you're actually going to see is it's actually now going to converge uh, downwards, right? So just because it does go up for the first 1,000 iterations, you might be looking at this trend and you're like, oh, wow, you know, it appears to be going up. Does that mean the probability of moving right is higher than the probability of moving left? Not necessarily, and you can clearly see this with our parameters. We're choosing a probability to be less than 50% for moving right, and it still goes up. But we see as if as we increase the number of iterations, practically the long-term behavior of that trend is practically dictated by that probability of success. So for example, if we just increase this up just a little bit more bit to 50,000 iterations, which obviously is going to take just a little bit more time, but not a significant amount of time, what you're actually going to see is, and it's sort of hesitating uh, on producing that graph, you'll actually see it's actually gonna go down even more as we clearly see here. Now, if we shift this back over to something like a probability of moving to the right is like 20%, then you're going to see a guaranteed uh, decrease um, on your negative end. See, you practically have a slope uh, that's practically linear. Um, and if we go slightly above a probability of success of 0.5, then what you're going to see is that it's going to 10 for the most part upwards, right? But of course, the closer and closer you are to 0.5, then the closer and closer you're going to have to these trends sort of dancing around um, the midline of red. But as you can see here, this appears to be having a almost downwards trend. Uh, but if we, of course, increase the number of iterations, what do you expect to happen with this trend if we go more and more and more and more and more? So if we go upwards and upwards, notice that it eventually does go above, right? So it's not going to stabilize um, eventually below, even though it's close to 0.5, because as you already know, according to uh, long-term probability or the limit as n goes to infinity, um, for the expected value of these returns, what you're going to actually see is eventually it's going to go in the positive direction for the long-term behavior which we clearly see here. And if you're not convinced, you can always change the C to something else. For example, 321654, and give that a run to sort of see, you know, is it still going to go up in the long-term behavior? Of course, of course it might get there in a different way, 
but in the long term, it still will have that same exact behavior. Let's just see what it actually looks like once it's done graphing. Oh, it actually does go under, you know, after that time. You know, that's perfectly it. Uh, acceptable and expected but again eventually it will go above if you increase that number of iterations which will take a little bit more longer to simulate which I won't entertain you with but of course there's so many things you can do with this you can even make these probabilities to be random probabilities on each iteration if you really want no that's actually a fun uh, uh, little assignment for you in case you're wondering uh, how to actually more accurately model uh, the stock market but this is just a basic model of stock market modeling um, using one-dimensional random walks right just to get you some idea of what you can do um, to model stochastic processes hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next one take care